Monday, January 20th, 2020, Monaco 64, home of alternative economics and contrarian views. Before I start today, I'd like to thank all the new uh, contributors to Patreon, people who have sent donations through PayPal, uh, who have used the uh, Monaco 64 Teespring store. I spoke, of course, the other day about the adverts uh, uh, in my channel. 99.9% .9 of you don't have a problem with it, uh, but I will still try to keep uh, the adverts to uh, the minimum as much as possible. Uh, so thank you very much. Uh, this morning, uh, I want to talk about how in 2020, I have a feeling that uh, not even the bureaucrats or the politicians running the major countries, especially the USA, are going to be unable to keep uh, papering over uh, a recession. They're going to be unable to hide uh, the fact that we're going into recession. And why do I say hide? Well, because they've been uh, papering over it. They, they've been using deficit spending, especially in the US. Uh, deficits have been running uh, like at 5% of GDP for the last couple of years. Uh, yes, uh, um, Larry Kudlow said the other day they're going to have a tax cut 2.0. That should increase the deficit. But I think it might be too late if they wait till the end of the year, towards the end of the year, near the election. So uh, before I start uh, going into the subject and look at some uh, data uh, from other countries as well, I want to look into how you calculate GDP. Just to show you how government spending is so important, the fact that the U.S. is running huge deficits uh, is what's keeping... Uh, that GDP number around 2%. If it wasn't for the deficit, or if the deficit was a little lower, that number would probably be zero to negative. So, and what's the problem with government spending? Well, government spending, <laughs> they some people want to call it investment these days, but it's not. Governments don't invest. <laughs> uh, government spending takes away from the private sector, from the productive sector of the economy and redistributes it uh, and that's not efficient as we know uh, so uh, it's very simple you look at the definition the expenditure approach of GDP and that's the one that the US uses it's uh, we got here the equation Y which is GDP equals C plus I plus G plus X minus M so what is that all about well, C is consumption. We know that the U.S. economy is two-thirds consumption. I is investment. G, that's the one, government spending. So if the government uh, is spending 5% of GDP, let's say you balance the budget, zero uh, percent of GDP, right? Government, government spending, uh, the tax income, ta incoming taxes, and government spending matched and you had a balance, uh, you would have to take out 5% from that uh, of GDP from that calculation. GDP would be more like minus 3%. So even if uh, they reined in the spending to 3% of GDP deficit, uh, the economy would come to a, a, a screeching halt. Uh, so that's what I wanted to show you how Government spending is important to the GDP calculations. Uh, the other uh, point I would make is that uh, the GDP number, of course, is a real GDP number. They take account of uh, inflation. And we all know how much they underestimate uh, the rising cost of living. And uh, I would add that uh, this number should be even more negative and uh, I will also talk about a really great uh, YouTube channel called DW and uh, how they go into the real world, uh, into the United States and look how 
Uh, even people who have jobs are living uh, below the poverty line. So it, it doesn't match all this talk about the greatest economy in the world. And I'm not trying to bash uh, President Trump. I would have uh, gone over this even if it was another president. Just looking at the data and, and the reality on the ground. So before I go into this video, uh, actually my wife was watching this. It's very interesting. I, I didn't know about this YouTube channel. I want to talk about uh, some other countries. Like even last year already, you're starting to see Germany slow down, coming to a grinding halt, the German economy. Of course, we've been told that it's because of the trade wars. Germany is a big exporter. Uh, I think it's uh, maybe partly because of that. But don't forget <laughs> credit cycles. There are cycles. You can't keep expanding credit forever. Uh, and how do cycles turn? In my opinion, it's because the general public, the people who take on the debt, uh, they're not able to keep taking on the debt. And there comes a point when the rising cost of living uh, reigns in their spending <laughs> and they cut down on, on taking more debt. They get worried about their jobs. So that's how it turns. Uh, yeah, the trade wars, uh, Brexit might have a little impact on it, but uh, it would have happened even if we hadn't had those two big distractions. So yeah, a German economy near, uh, well, flat, near to recession. I would add that the German government though runs a budget surplus. So the German uh, economy, if it falls, into a deep recession they have the ammunition fiscal ammunition in germany while in the us uh there is no ammunition i think the german debt to gdp is like 60 percent of uh, gdp uh the uk <laughs> uh we saw last week and i'll reference this article in the ft uk retail sales suffer longest contraction since records began <laughs> is that um, a sign of an economy that's doing well, a sign of an economy that's expanding? No. <laughs> don't, don't forget, the UK is very similar to the US. Um, consumption is very important to our economy. Weak consumer sector adds to pressure on Bank of England to cut rates. Britain's retail sector defied expectations and continued to contract last month, marking the longest spell of no growth since comparable records began in 1957. Wow, that's a long time ago. Uh, and adding pressure on the Bank of England to cut interest rates. Is it going to work? I don't think so. As I said, uh, we are told that inflation is very low in the UK or the cost of living, the rising cost of living, like 1.5. If it was that low, people wouldn't be struggling. If people had jobs that paid well, people would be, wouldn't be struggling and cutting back on spending. Uh, the other country I would note is China. They came out with their GDP number last week. It was as expected, 6% year on year. It sounds like a big number, but uh, China has always had very uh, high GDP growth numbers, mainly because it's a emerging economy but six percent was the lowest since 1990 so there you go um, i think we're moving towards a recession uh late 2018 the u.s yield curve started inverting that's a sign that things uh, uh precursor to a slowdown i think the only reason they've been able to keep th things going is the federal reserve backtracking uh, cutting rates last year three times, inflating their balance sheet by 400 billion in the last few months of the of the year, and uh, yeah, I don't think they're gonna be able to patch things over. Maybe if they get the deficit spending to uh, seven percent of GDP, they might be able to keep the economy uh, from contracting. But uh, let's just look at this uh, documentary. Uh, I haven't watched the whole thing. My wife and daughter were watching it yesterday, and it's from DW. Uh, uh, who's DW? Well, DW, it says here, uh, 
the DW documentary gives you information beyond the headlines. Watch high class documentaries from German broadcasters and international production companies. Uh, meeting and training people, travel to distant lands, get a look behind the complexities of daily life and build a deeper understanding of current affairs and global events. Subscribe and explore the world around you with DW from Deutsche Welle, German's international broadcaster. It's in English, so uh, I recommend people watch this uh, video here. And again, I'm not trying to bash the US or I'm just trying to give you the facts. Things here in the UK aren't great either. People are also living under the poverty line. Uh, it's the same thing here. It's the same thing in the continent of Europe. It's the same thing in the third world countries, of course. But the video in question, I'll put it up in the cards and below in the description for you to watch. How people survive in the USA poverty in the USA and the interesting statistic that they talk about is that over 40 million people in the United States live below the poverty line twice as many as it was 50 years ago so there you go the inequality growth 40 million is about just over 12 percent of the US population and a lot of these people are actually working. That's what I was surprised. They're not unemployed. They have jobs, but they just can't afford housing. They can't afford health care. Uh, it's uh, really a, a bad situation. So when we get people not only in the US, but here in the UK saying that the economy is great, unemployment is at the lowest uh, level ever. We have the greatest economy. Uh, they're ignoring a lot of people uh, who aren't uh, benefiting from this. Uh, am I trying to give a solution here? No, I'm just trying to talk about the facts. For me, the solution starts with the monetary system. I think it's, uh, you notice that in the last 50 years, this thing, this uh, amount of people in the poverty, uh, uh, living in, under the poverty line has doubled. Well, what have we had in the last 50 years? We have, we've had a fiat uh, currency system, not backed by gold. We haven't had sound money. Uh, and who benefits from that? Well, the bankers, uh, the very wealthy people, and the, the people at the bottom uh, get hurt. <laughs> this proves it, uh, in my opinion. So I, I recommend uh, you watch this video. I'm going to watch it as well. Um, it's 42 minutes long, but I think it's worth it. So with that, let's quickly look at where the markets are this morning uh, here in London. It's uh, 8.16 a.m. London time. And why do I do uh, my, <laughs> my London market update? Well, as I've told many people in the past, uh, that's what I used to do for my clients uh, that I had in the U.S. when I worked in the city. They wanted to know what was happening in Europe before the U.S. markets opened. And I think it's... a uh, a good way to start the day if you uh, look at markets. So right now, spot gold is at 15.6050, up just over three dollars. We've been as high as 15.63 and as low as 15.56. Silver is up three cents at 18.05. Range has been 17.99 to 18.14. So we've drifted off here a little bit from the highs. The Dow future is down 58. 0.2 of a percent at 29,280. Um, S&P future down eight or a quarter of a percent at 33.20. NASDAQ 100 future down 0.2 percent. Uh, sterling is down a bit this morning. Uh, it's down a quarter of a percent, 129.73. Uh, the uh, euro is unchanged, 110.90. Uh, yeah, euro versus the dollar, of course. Uh, the dollar is unchanged against the Japanese yen at 110.14. Uh, dollar is down slightly against the U1 at 6.86. Uh, WTI crude is up almost uh, a percent. It's up three quarters of a percent, 59.02. Brent is up three quarters as well at 64.84. The 10-year yield is up one basis point, just under 183 this morning. So there you go. Uh, definitely 
think we've been in a recession for a long time. Uh, it's just that uh, they're able to paper over the statistics, fiddle with the numbers. I think it's going to be very hard for them to uh, keep this going in 2020. And uh, yeah, comment below in the comment section. Tell me what your anecdotal evidences are of uh, the economy, where you live. Uh, doesn't matter if it's in the US, Canada, uh, Netherlands, uh, UK. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you hit the like button. Uh, subscribe to the channel if you haven't yet. Please share this video far and wide. It helps, as I always say. Uh, make sure you hit that little notification bell above to be notified of all my new videos. And you can also follow me on Twitter, BitChute, DTube, and Steemit. I wish you all a great start to the week. Take care. Bye.